you're asking, did y'all get a new toy? We did. It is the Sony ZV-E1. A camera for creators like ourselves, for vloggers. And it's different from pretty much every other camera on the market. It is full frame and it doesn't have a viewfinder because it's not a hybrid camera. It is not a stills camera that can be used for video. It is just for us. That last shot was a little bit shaky, so we turned on dynamic active stabilization and that acts like kind of a built-in gimbal for your camera, which is nice because you get this light set up and you still get well, maybe good image stabilization. How does it look to you? This video is brought to you by Adorama. That's where we order our new gear and you should too. They have great sales. They have the deal of the day. They have rush shipping if you need something right away and they have a huge selection and carry everything you need for photography or video. Thanks Adorama. The ZV-E1 has a zoom lever next to the shutter. Even with this 20 F1.8 Prime, I was able to zoom in digitally. Sony has a lot of lenses made just for creators like this 20 f1.8 and power zoom lenses and that gives you the ability to create unique looks. Notice I'm shooting at a wide angle but I still have some background blur. Canon makes good vlogging cameras but they don't make a lens like the 20 f1.8. There's no sensor stabilization, the lens isn't stabilized but it's still pretty stable thanks to electronic stabilization. It's not gimbal-like but it's good. What'd you find? Emily Dickinson for a dollar. Well, good price. It's a bargain. She wrote that whole book and she's gonna sell it for a dollar? She's getting ripped off. Us creators gotta make some money. I found this book of poetry and I wanna test the new mode on the camera where I can hold it up and see if I can focus on the product without having to hide my face. Okay, now it's on. Yeah, it just switched to the book right away. Hide it again. And now I'm talking about poetry. Hold the book up. Oh, that's so nice. You no longer have to hide your face behind things that you hold up. Of you can course. see in our other reviews, I'm like, ah, ha ha. Okay, this is a luxury. This is a mode I've never seen on any camera. It will increase the depth of field when there's more than one subject in it. So I like some background blur, some background separation. And right now I have an F1.8 lens, but it's shooting at F2.2. And if I spin around here and we get Chelsea in the shot, it's at F4.5, F6.3, F9, F10. So it saw her and brought the depth of field up. And then as she moves closer, I can see the aperture and drop down to F9. What if we get in the same focal plane? It's at F8 now. So it's making the depth of field changes pretty transparently without any unevenness to it. I pull away and it opens it right back up and now those books fall out of focus again. Pretty nice. That is a killer feature. The one big downside to it is, is it only works in the completely auto mode. So you can't put it into shutter priority or aperture priority. You have to let the camera completely control the settings. But if you're willing to do that, it's pretty smart. Do you like the new Sony ZV-E1? That's the biggest reaction I've gotten. The ZV-E1 has incredibly sophisticated subject detection that can autofocus on planes, trains, cars, people, animals, even this bee. It worked great, but if I'm nitpicking, I do see the focus pulsing a little bit. Chelsea's recording me and I don't have to ask her if she's recording because she has a tally light on the camera. Very clever, Sony. This is a good test of dynamic range because there's a huge difference between inside and outside here. So we're testing the 422 10-bit recording, which in post-processing will allow me to pull down the highlights and pull up the shadows and make this look a lot better. We could have gotten more dynamic range using S-Log3. This was testing the 422 10-bit video. Another cool feature of the ZV-E1 is auto framing, where I should be able to walk around here and it will crop the frame in and follow me as I move just to make a more dynamic scene. I configured it to change every 15 seconds. So now I'm gonna do some yard work. Can you believe this guy trying to do chores and pass it off as work? Anyway, the camera zoomed in, which is right, but then I guess I got too small in the frame because it just panned back out and it failed this task completely. It occurs to me maybe I was too small in the frame and I don't wanna just walk around weirdly in my front yard, so let's go to the backyard. Other YouTubers are probably doing like skateboarding or something. Only on the Tony and Chelsea channel do you get people doing landscaping while loud motorcycles go past in the background.
Let's try it again in the backyard. Look at me skateboarding, kickflip. Cool, Tony. Hop, skip, that's a skateboarding move. Uh, goofy style 180. <laughs> I, I used to play Tony Hawk back in, that was awful and I'm sorry you had to see that. Mm, let's try this with a heavier crop. Here's how this works. You just fix your camera on a tripod and it follows you around cropping in tight and it tracks your body. It sees your arms and legs and tracks your human form so it tracks you even when you look away. It never locks on the background. I will say the intelligence is really good. Dynamic framing also works with the stabilization. So when you're handheld, your face, it'll crop in, but your face doesn't have to be in the center of the frame. So here I've locked my face to the left edge of the frame, which is useful because I might want to point out our 600 millimeter F4 lens back there. And I see it tracking my eye and, oh, it's hard to show you, but when I push to the left, like I am right now, it is reframing the shot to keep me in the left part of the frame, or maybe it's the right part of the frame to you. <laughs> I love auto framing, really good way to speed up your workflow, but I hate that it doesn't support vertical video. So many of us need to create both horizontal and vertical videos, and it is a pain to reconfigure the camera. So we end up shooting wide and then cropping in. And this, it, this could totally crop to some TikTok perspective, maybe for more update Sony, as long as we're talking about love and hate, let's do a segment I call love hate. I love that it supports 4k 120 frames per second video but I hate that I can't test it for you. Sony says they're going to release it in a future firmware update. Also, I hate that they say they might charge some countries for it. They're not supposed to charge the United States, but I don't know which countries they might charge, if any. I love Sony's hot shoe microphone adapter. If you use one of Sony's mics, you can get crystal clear sound without having that extra cable. But I hate that if I do use my own mic, you flip a door out to access the mic jack and the mic and the door cover the upper left corner of the screen where the audio levels are. I really need to see those audio levels. I love that the ZV-E1 now supports changing settings with touch. I can't do that with my A7S III, but I hate that I still can't scrub through video that I've recorded to quickly access the beginning and end of it to sort of spot check if I have sound and everything's in focus. Also, I hate that the screen is still not readable in direct sunlight. My iPhone, totally readable. The Canon R6, much brighter than this. The Sony screen really cannot be viewed in sunlight. And even if you cup your hands over it, it's still not really good enough to verify focus, things you absolutely need in the field. Uh, I can live with this on the A7S III because I have a viewfinder, but without a viewfinder, Sony, you gotta make the back screen much better. I love time lapses. This is a brand new feature for Sony. I can start a time lapse with just a couple of taps and I don't have to select the frames per second or anything. It just makes a full video file for me ready to drag right into Final Cut. These automatic time lapses are such a time saver over capturing individual stills and processing it in post. I hate that the exposure wanders up and down in regular video. Most people won't notice it, but some people do and they comment on it. And it has been a problem in Sony cameras for years. The easy solution is to use manual mode all the time, but auto exposure is actually really important when you're filming yourself because, well, first it's sort of hard to adjust the settings when you get close to the camera because you fill up too much of the frame and the light might change. Like you could be out of the light here, but in the light when you're back here. But also light, especially if you're outdoors, can change over time. And I want those exposure adjustments to be smooth and not flickering up and down. And if the lighting is steady, I need the exposure to be rock solid. Some of you are getting serious about video creation, but you're not ready to spend over $2,000 just on a camera body. I got you. The, the first thing you do before you even buy a camera, just keep using your smartphone, but add a microphone and lights. So I'll show you the difference. See what a crazy difference those two things made? Use these links and check out Adorama. They have a full selection of video lights and microphones just for creators like us, because that is all Adorama does. They just support us and we should support them by using our links. If you don't want to spend over two grand on a camera body, Sony has a much less expensive little brother of the ZV-E1 that we previously reviewed and absolutely loved. So check out the ZV-E10 at Adorama. You can get an entire kit with a mini tripod and with filters and an SD card set up specifically for vlogging. And it is an amazing way to get started. I shop at Adorama. They support us. They support 
all creators. So thank you for sponsoring us, Adorama. This is the sound coming straight out of the ZV-E1. It might not be quite as good because proximity is still the most important thing when it comes to microphones, but it might be better than a typical camera. So let's switch to the Canon R6 Mark II. This is the on-camera mic from the Canon R6 Mark II, so you can hear the audio quality without Sony's special mic. This doesn't matter to you at all if you're actually going to use an external mic, which is like us, but maybe you need it in an emergency if your mic runs out of batteries, or maybe you just like to travel as light as possible. Next test. One of the reasons people spend more on a full frame camera like this, as opposed to getting a ZV-E10, is they want this sort of crazy background blur that you can get with full frame lenses. Well, it doesn't have to be crazy background blur, but having the ability to create subject separation at will using something like the 50 F1.2 that I'm filming with is really powerful for those who need to shoot in a variety of different environments where the background isn't always controlled or flattering. Canon and Sony both do great in autofocusing wide open, but surprisingly, they actually seem to struggle more when you shut the aperture down to the max f-stop like f16, which I'll do now. I like that with the Sony lenses, the aperture ring is on the lens that's easily accessible for me. And as I adjusted it, it didn't need to shake the camera because I can de-click them. Canon doesn't have lenses that work like that. You have to actually shake the camera. So now I'm just going to sort of move in and out and see if it can smoothly track me. I'm also just gonna to try to hold still and see if it causes the background to pulse at all. The high f-stop autofocus is acceptable, but not perfect. It's okay when I'm still, but as soon as I move a little, the focus becomes very jerky and pushes in and out abruptly. Here's the Canon at f1.2. So I'll shut this one down. And notice when I do, I like how the camera shakes. Here's the Canon at f16. So I'll move in and out. The Sony ZV-E1 is definitely better for autofocusing with high f-stops. The Canon haunted in and out and while it always eventually got focused, the shifts were pretty distracting. Another place modern mirrorless cameras struggle with autofocus is in really low light conditions. I am lit only by the monitors behind the camera and I'm at ISO 51,200 at F1.2. It is pitch dark in here. And I wanna see if the ZV-E1 can lock focus on my eye. Really did a very good job, though maybe there's like a tiny bit of lag when I'm moving quickly, but it's awesome. And this is the Canon at ISO 51,200. Hello, Canon. Hello. Face, Canon. My face, Canon. Okay, wait. Okay, it got me finally. The Canon took longer to lock on, but when it finally did lock on, it did pretty well. It just didn't track me moving nearly as well as the ZV-E1, so the winner here is clearly the Sony. Scaled up 200%, you can see the Sony's focus transitions are much smoother and the video quality has much less noise. You'll notice the video quality out of this is just gorgeous. Like, look what 50 F1.2 gives you, and you might want this if you're streaming online, if you're teaching, if you just host a class or something. It certainly looks way better than your webcam, right? Sony lets you do this by simply connecting a USB cable. I connected the USB cable, and now I can select live stream via USB streaming. Oh, I currently am using a low quality cable, but it should go up to 4K 30. And now in Zoom, I can select ZVE1, and bam. This is a little bit better than the webcam, right? And it could stream absolutely live. There are a couple of challenges. Like I can see myself on the camera, which I need to since that's where I need to look. But it's got words written right across my forehead and the USB cable also blocks the screen. Now I'll test overheating on the Canon R6 Mark II and the Sony ZV-E1. Indoors, about 70 degrees out of direct sunlight. They got 37 minutes and 35 minutes recording at 4K 60 frames per second, which was disappointing. That's not enough for me to do a lot of the video formats that I do. Notice that the screen on the R6 Mark II is significantly brighter than the screen on the ZV-E1, and you see that difference even indoors. I did a second test of the ZV-E1 indoors, but in sunlight through a window, and it overheated in just 30 minutes. This looks like an ordinary lamp, but this is the flickering lamp of doom. It looks normal to my eye, but it flickers at an extremely fast rate, and we use it to measure the readout speed of camera's sensors. The readout speed determines the amount of rolling shadow that you're gonna get. And for video cameras, this means that when you're doing a whip pan, 
It is the amount of angling that you're going to get on vertical subjects. You see this a lot in action movies. When they pan around following something fast, the buildings will suddenly turn diagonal. This is a negative trait. You want them to remain straight, which means you want a fast readout speed. Testing the ZV-E1, it seems to have the same readout speed as the Sony A7S III. That is 27% less than the Canon R6 Mark II, which is not a huge amount, but you would notice 27% less tilt. So comparing those two cameras, it is a win for the Sony. This is probably the biggest threat to the modern camera industry. The SD card is how most of us transfer images from our cameras to our computers. That's a traditional workflow. But most new creators who are buying a new camera have a workflow that revolves entirely around this. They capture stills and video with this. They edit and publish all with a single device. And this significantly slows down the workflow. So camera manufacturers have been making apps that are supposed to make it easier to transfer wirelessly your content from your camera to this device. There's a problem though, they don't work very well. They almost universally have 1.5 stars on the app store. So I was really excited when Sony launched the new creator app, which works with the new ZV-E1. I spent 45 minutes trying to get it to work and I failed. Look in the comments and you'll see people saying, oh, the app worked perfectly for me. Here's the thing. Bad apps work perfectly for some people, maybe even many people. Good apps work perfectly for everybody. I failed at this, and honestly, I don't recommend any of the apps, so this is not a slight on Sony. This is a weakness of the entire camera industry, except really DJI. I'm blown away by the ZV-E1. I think it is the perfect camera for creators who, well, if you have the budget, if you're a professional creator, if you want no compromises, if you want the option to blur out the background, if you might be hand-holding it without a gimbal, if you might have people coming in and out of camera at any point, but it, also, it does it all. If you want that nice little feature where you hold up a product and it focuses on that instead of your face. Oh, if you look, don't want to have to be hiding behind everything that you hold up. Yeah, exactly. But there are some drawbacks if you have other needs. So if you want to be shooting stills as well, then you might consider some other options. We have the Sony a7C here, which I think is better for people who might want to do stills as well, but is not as good as the ZV-1 in a few different ways. One of them being autofocus. I was not happy with it as a vlogging camera. I found it jumped to the background. Let's see what happens if I flip around and check out Chelsea. What's up? Did it work? The full frame vlogging camera I've been recommending is the a7 IV and the autofocus on this is excellent. It is a hybrid camera, so it has a viewfinder, has 33 megapixel still, so you could use it for sports, wildlife portraits, and of course it's got a flip screen and it's got two card slots, which is an advantage over the ZV-E1, but it does not do full width 4K 60. It'll record 4K 60, but with a heavy crop, which I don't really consider to be usable. So if you plan on filming 4K 60 like we do, you would still want to get the ZV-E1. But this is nice because it takes amazing stills as well. But let's remember- But it remember, does not have the product showcase. It will not say. track autofocus on two people. Now let's talk about another option and it's Canon. We've jumped to a whole other brand. The Canon R6, I still think, is the best contender here. Now, it is significantly bigger, even if I take this lens off, and but it's more versatile, too. It's got a 24 megapixel sensor, twice the detail for stills, and, of course, a proper viewfinder. And sports, wildlife portraits, this is going to be way better than the ZV-E1. And even for video, it has some advantages, like it has two card slots. The autofocus on this is great. I think they're about the same for autofocus. But, but the big advantage Sony has is their lens system. You're going to yeah. have more mirrorless lens options on Sony. So if you want different looks, you can see we use multiple different lenses in this video, then you might want to consider staying with Sony. If you're somebody that's taking photos of everything, sports, wildlife, parties, your friends, events, and then also doing some video, I think that the Canon is going to be your best option. But, but look, we used the 20 F1.8 the 24 F14, the 35 F14, none of those exist in the Canon mirrorless system. You might be able to adapt an old DSLR lens or something, but then you're adding some bulk and the autofocus is never quite the same with DSLR lenses as they are with native mirrorless lenses. So 
I really feel like for video creators, the ZV E1 is the better choice. I think that the biggest takeaway with all of our camera reviews is not picking the best camera, but picking the camera that is best for you. So think about what you're using it for, what your needs are, and what you absolutely cannot live without. And one of these cameras is gonna work for you. And whichever one you choose, Adorama is going to have it. They're gonna have your mics, they're gonna have your lenses, they're gonna have your tripods, your gimbals, your drones, everything you could possibly need is going to be there. So check our description, hit their links, and shop around. Thanks for sponsoring us, Adorama. If you have any follow-up questions, write a comment down below and uh, we'll answer it or even make a follow-up video. Bye.